Welcome back to Wisconsin. Purdue and the Badgers getting ready to go from Camp Randall Stadium. Wisconsin won the toss. They have elected to receive. Abradaris and White are back. And Purdue will kick it away in the person of Carson Wiggs, who has a very strong leg. 19 touchbacks and 45 kickoffs this year. He is kicking with a pretty respectable win. Abradaris from the three. Nice move to get outside. Picks up an additional 10 yards to the 37-yard line. Russell Wilson, what a find coming from North Carolina State after an excellent career there. He's on pace to break the NCAA's all-time passing efficiency mark. And what he has done in home games in Wisconsin, I mean, he has just lit this place up and entertained the home fans. Yeah, it's, it, it grew on him quickly, didn't it? I mean, coming to Camp Randall, a very good young man and an equally good football player. Monty Ball, the other great story on this offensive unit is the tailback and he'll get the carry gaping hole straight up the middle for Monty Ball it's a foot race and he's caught inside the 20 a saving tackle by Ricardo Allen rips off 45 on his first carry the computer science engineer left guard watched the pull and the kick out that clears the roll there for them Travis Frederick opening it up Beautiful blocking execution. Monty Ball on a pace to have a record season, but that's just, that's execution there. Purdue has got to come off and beat them to the point of attack. They are playing against an outstanding offensive line. Trying to get outside this time, just discards one tackler, and that was Josh Johnson. Let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Chick fil A, right? Well, we've already seen one of them take off down the football field. Monty Ball, 100, 134 all purpose yards a game. Means a lot more to this team than just running. Great attitude guy. Nick Toon on the outside. I believe his dad's here watching today. Al, the former great Badger. He needs to have a great ball game. And then Joe Holland, we talked about him. Purdue, unlike that first snap of this game, they've got to play with great emotion and get to the point of attack. James White, number 20, checks in for the first time. And Wilson to throw, tune to the two. It will be first and goal. Ricardo Allen made the tackle. Toon made his 31st catch of the year. And there's Albert Evans, number 32. You'll see a safety on the inside didn't get over to help out. And for Toon, he was challenged by Russell Wilson early in their relationship to not just accept being adequate. To be great, you have the skill set to be a great receiver. Work hard Monday through Friday to get there. Russell Wilson didn't come here to play with a bunch of guys who were going to be adequate. Ball. Ball was a guy last year who was actually the third tailback behind John Clay and James White, who is now backing him up. This year he has blossomed. He lost 15 pounds according to the coaches, 25 pounds according to him. <laughs> yeah. And he says his endurance has gone up remarkably. And right now, he is the number one player in the country in terms of total touchdowns. He has 21. Wilson flips it to the end zone. Touchdown. Jacob Pedersen, the tight end, gets his seventh receiving touchdown of the year. Well, if Purdue had to come out strong defensively on the first possession, they failed in their initial mission. That only took two minutes and 13 seconds. Mm -hmm. Philip Welch on for the point after. Not bad, Mr. Patterson, for a guy who almost quit football to become a mortician. Bielman talked him out of that. That was a good decision. <laughs> a 
ABC primetime tonight. We started off with Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, 7 o'clock on ESPNU. The Bearcats, the only team in the Big East unbeaten in the conference. Number nine, South Carolina. Number seven, Arkansas. The other SEC top ten matchup tonight. Notre Dame Wake Forest at 8 o'clock on ABC or ESPN2. Or number 14, Kansas State against number three, Oklahoma State, 8 o'clock on ABC or ESPN2. And that game, I think, would be considered such a huge ball game if it weren't for LSU and Alabama tonight. Yeah, there's no question about that. But for Oklahoma State, they got to stay the course because the loser of LSU, Alabama, is going to be in the conversation as to where they should be ranked with Oklahoma State, Stanford, Oklahoma. Welch to kick. Mostert and Hunt are deep. Mostert from the 10. Got a good block in front, found the seam. Got by the kicker midfield. There's a nice response down to the Wisconsin 40-yard line. 50-yard kickoff return. The last time you and I were here doing a Wisconsin game was Arizona State last year. Remember the kick That's return right. by Arizona State? That's almost right. ate them up, didn't it? Special teams been an issue here for Wisconsin's football team. This is a nice job by Purdue answering the quick strike offense of Wisconsin, giving their offense a little field position. Mostert fifth in the Big Ten in kickoff returns. Caleb Turbush leads the offense out. He was supposed to be the third team quarterback this year. And he gives it off on the end around to Antavian Edison. Normally the slot book, uh, slot back rather. But Turbush, because Rob Henry got hurt and Robert Marv, a name you might recognize, got hurt. And now Purdue in the hurry up. Turbush sets, throws wide open, his tight end, Crosby right, and just like that, a 50-yard kickoff return, and then a 30-yard pass, and it's 7-6. Didn't see that coming. Well, neither did Wisconsin. The pace and the tempo, a nice job of Turbush getting them to the line of scrimmage, making the call. Gary Nord, the offensive coordinator, got him right back up there before Wisconsin could make the adjustment and get lined up right. Carson Wiggs for the point after. And the tone of the crowd has turned from, hey, this is going to be fun. We can go to the concession stand seven, eight times to what is going on here? Woo. Hello. ESPN's College Football is presented by Five Hour Energy, the no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. Visit fivehourenergy.com and in part by Audi, Truth and Engineering. Quite a few college quarterbacks have played pro baseball. John Elway played for the Oneonta Yankees. Chris Winkie, Triple A, before winning the Heisman. Drew Henson made the major leagues. Russell Wilson may be drafted in two sports. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He only hit 228 in Class A ball this year. Not a good sign in baseball, but he's got a shot at the NFL. Uh, you notice that other one, other than Elway, was Todd Helton, who backed up at Tennessee oh. quarterback Keith Schuler. Yes, Peyton Manning went on the fifth, eighth overall selection in 1995 by the Rockies. Abradaris two yards deep. He'll bring it out. Knocked out of bounds up around the 25 by Logan Link. Now this is just confusion here. Chris Borland, Mike, the Mike linebacker. Here's your tight end right here. Here's your Will walked out. There's confusion as to who has the tight end. It ends up being no one accounts for the tight end. I don't know exactly what the rules were for them, but remember, Chris Borland knew at the Mike position this year after moving from the outside, so uh, absolute confusion, and a lot of that because of the quick pace of Purdue's offense. Wilson, plenty of time, and overthrows Abradaris, and now a flag is down. It's either gonna be a hold or interference. Holding. Defense. Number 48. 
10 yard penalty, automatic first down. No, I don't think it was 48. I think it may have been 28, Josh Johnson. Yeah, there's just a lot of time in the backfield for Russell Wilson and his receivers are going to get open. You can't cover. I, you know, there is hand contact. The feet were incidental contact, but the hands up top on the jersey, I think they got made the right call there on Johnson. And it was the junior from Dade City, Florida. Back to the eye formation for Wisconsin. Ball. Another big hole rambles forward to the 42. Now, thanks to EA Sports, here's Craig with the James game. All right, we're going to call this next level block, and we've already seen left guard Travis Frederick get to the next level, the linebackers, which allows Monty Ball and James White to run free to the line of scrimmage to make folks miss and to get the head of steam. Purdue has to be like Ohio State was last week, extremely aggressive at the point of attack, the line of scrimmage, and then peel off late for the play action. Whistles will stop this play. Before the snap, false start, 70, offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. It's Kevin Zeitler, who is going to be a very, very high draft choice, and that's not unusual on this offensive line for Wisconsin. Brett Bielema has a parade of guys coming into play, offensive line and running back. This system is just ideal for those two positions, and this year he's got Russell Wilson, the exceptional quarterback. This offense has everything. The offense did not lose any of those two heartbreaking games. Ball again. Nice cut to get to the outside. Shows speed and power and agility. He's up to the 48-yard line before Logan Link, the strong safety, took him down. That's a pretty good size offensive line there. Everyone knows that when you play against Wisconsin's offensive line, they're not just big, Mike. No, they're not. You know, th these guys move, and that's why we said the next level, you see them blocking. That time, Kevin Zeitler made up for the false start by getting the end hooked. I mean, they're just athletic with their feet and very smart. The three offensive linemen make the NFL as they give it to Edward Davis on the flanker around. Three guys made NFL teams last year. Three guys were starting at the beginning of the season. One of them was a consensus All-American, Gabe Karimi. John Moffitt was a first-team All-American. Then they had a backup who went to Dallas, and he was starting at the beginning of the year. Yeah, before he got hurt. And, I mean, he was a key player for the Cowboys. It's the next man up on this offensive line. You walk in their locker room and their weight room, and you see young, big, long-armed <laughs> players waiting their turn. Peter Kahn's the center could be the best player as a lineman in the Big Ten. He's only a junior. That pass was intended for Toon overthrown. Albert Evans had pretty good coverage. All right. So so for Purdue this football team now at third and 11 right where they want to be this defense. I said it in the first series has to play with emotion. Coach Hope has to get these folks out there energized. They have got to be strong. They have to be passionate. If you're going to go on the road against a great football team like Wisconsin, you have to play with great intensity. And having third and 11, this is a place to dial it up. Danny Hope, after a success at Eastern Kentucky, has a chance to coach here. Wilson under pressure. Eludes a tackle, eludes another one, dives forward to the Purdue 42-yard line. And depending on the spot, he should have the first down. What a play by Wilson against an all-out blitz. This is the element Russell Wilson really showcased when he was at North Carolina State. He ran a lot. He's come here to this offense, and Paul Christ has him back, sitting back there, dissecting defenses with the play action. A defense right there, dialed it up the middle, got to the middle of the field, but because of the athleticism, Russell Wilson beats them for the first down. I know both of us really like the way Paul Chris calls plays on offense, but he's got a kid in Russell Wilson. Even if he calls the wrong play or that play isn't working, Russell Wilson can bail him out and make it work. That's been the difference in this offense. And that's the that is really at the heart of why Wisconsin fans, coaches, players are so disappointed. 
Paul Chris. Exactly. And they, I mean, because they have everything in place to play for a national championship here. This is a football team a couple of plays away from being undefeated and right up there in the top five. They're sixth in the country in scoring, 45.1 points a game. They are incredibly balanced. They can run it. They can throw it. You can take one away, and they can still beat you doing the other, and you're right. That's one of the reasons that they are so critically disappointed with the last two weeks. Woo. Big shot from Ryan Russell, the red shirt freshman who drops Monty Ball. And let's check into the studio. All right, Mike, AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. USC's Mac Bartley last night. Six touchdowns as USC is 6-0 all-time against Colorado. Fourth time in Bartley's career he has thrown five or more touchdowns in a game. Most such games by any USC quarterback in school history. Text vote to 55862 at a chance at a trip to the national title. Robert Flores, thank you very much. Third down, long three for Wisconsin. Play action faked by Wilson. Plenty of time. Had a receiver wide open. Aberderis ran into Ricardo Allen. And they rule it incidental contact, no flag. Yeah, I, I like this no call here. You know, this is just being good football on the open field, one on one. You've got pressure coming to the inside. And I thought Allen, who is an outstanding cover man, did a good job of understanding the route. You know, if you're going to pick on one guy over there, or if you're going to have to hope for one guy to cover at Purdue, Ricardo Allen certainly is the guy. Nortman is on to punt. The last couple of weeks have been an adventure. He's had one blocked in each game. Grave Sandy does not expect to get the ball. And he will not be disappointed as a high end over end catch. He'll make it just inside the 10 on the fair catch. A punt of only 24, but he did his job. He pinned him inside the 10. We're tied at seven early at Wisconsin. Russell Wilson, who has scored on one of two possessions so far and has Wisconsin in a 7 7 tie with Purdue. The Boilermakers will take over from the 10. The Badgers defense have allowed 68 yards in the first drive of the game. First eight games today, 41 yards and a touchdown. It was the first time anybody scored on the first possession. Chris Borland makes the tackle on Caleb Turbush. Yeah, in case your coffee cup wasn't quite empty, <laughs> this is how this ball game started. It was quick. Monty Ball had a long run, and Pedersen has the touchdown. A couple of, a couple of plays later, Purdue finds their tight end, Crosby Wright, for a touchdown. Ralph Bolden, the tailback, dances back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's it. The thing I like about Purdue's offense is you don't know where it's going. Defensively, you have to defend sideline to sideline. No one individual star over there. They have right. a good running back in Bolden. He's a very capable guy. The quarterback can do a little bit of everything. You just have to be on your toes defensively against this Purdue offense. Bolden missed last year with a torn ACL. In 2009, he was second team all Big Ten, rushed for nearly 1,000 yards. Now Turbush back to, back to throw underneath to Bolden. He tries to dive for the 20, and it looks like he's going to be just shy of the sticks. The underneath game, being able to defend the first down marker by the linebackers coming up, keeping everything in front of them. This is a smart Wisconsin defense and did their job. One of Purdue's strengths is the leg of Cody Webster. He's the number one kicker in the NCAA. He averages 45.5 yards a kick, but he is kicking to Jared Aberderis, who is 10th in the country in punt returns. 17-6. Strength against strength. A booming punt that drives Aberderis all the way back to the 25. Did he outkick his coverage? Aberderis trying to get to the corner. He's back to the 25. A 56 yard punt and a return of one boy great job by Purdue on special teams Logan Link made the stop yeah Joe Holland the linebacker down there covering punt coverage great job of pushing Aberderis back to the middle yeah. 
Six oh five to go first quarter Wisconsin has the ball back at its own twenty five yard line tied at seven with Purdue. Russell Wilson brings them out with White as his tailback. The sophomore from Fort Lauderdale who rushed for over a thousand yards last year was the Big Ten Rookie of the Year. This time White swallowed up by Kawan Short who was their best defensive line. He's a playmaker up there. Leads this team in sacks gets a lot of penetration. 7-7 first quarter. You surprised? Not at all. I went back this morning watching Purdue against Illinois when they up, upset number 23 Illinois. They had execution. They have athletes. They spread it around. Defensively, you're seeing some emotion now start to creep into this football game. They've got a bunch of the line of scrimmage and prepare for Wisconsin to run the ball. Wisconsin comes in averaging 231 yards plus in the ground game. That's 12th in the country, third in the Big Ten. Their total offense, number one in the conference, and the scoring offense, number one in the conference. But you, you know what? We, we see it all the time when a, a team who's superior comes in and, they, and, the, and the inferior team, the underdog, hangs around for a while, and then they lose it as the game goes on. That's why I keep talking about passion and emotions for Purdue to stay in this game. Third down and long for Wilson. Four-man rush. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Has Duckworth wide open. Duckworth to the five-yard line. He beat Ricardo Allen for 67 yards, and Wilson put it on the money. Uh, I tell you what, this is a nice job of Russell Wilson buying time, allowing the wheel route on the left side of the line of scrimmage on the inside receiver. The wheel route is run by Jeff Duckworth. Russell Wilson buys enough time in his athleticism. This is where you see the baseball player in him come out. You see how his shoulders get around? They're so good at throwing naturally. And that is not an easy throw, running left and throwing that way. You've got to get a lot of torque to get it there. White. And he'll lose yardage back to the nine as Gerald Gooden, number two, comes up from his defensive end spot to make the stop. Yeah, Gooden's a heck of a play over there. And, and when you look at this Wisconsin offense, tops in the country in scoring touchdowns when they get inside that red zone. This is a better area for Purdue to defend because they can really get aggressive. Of course, what's that open up? Play action. And Wilson's really good at it. Tune and Amber Garris, the wide receivers, and then they've got Duckworth on the outside as well. Wilson scrambling, he'll keep it. And out of bounds at the five. Now this play was designed by Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator, to go to Patterson, the tight end. He's right over here. Watch what he does. It's going to be a little out, a little shake and bake, trying to get back to the out to the back of the end zone. That's called a toast route, but the toaster didn't work on that play. Great coverage in the secondary, and uh, Purdue. This this play here. Now they've got to be balanced for sure. For the last five years, a tight end has led this team in catches Wilson on the roll throws back at the end zone Aberderis touchdown Aberderis the leading receiver on this ball club and coming into this game was averaging over a hundred yards a game in the last two wow this is a bullet this is turning the double play from shortstop putting it right between two defenders you see how much more velocity he put on the ball knowing that's where it had to go and it had to be with pace another quick drive for Wisconsin this only took 241 in six plays and covered 75 yards and the Badgers are back on top by seven the thing about Wisconsin's offense, and when I said balance, I said Purdue has to be balanced. You can't just focus on the running game or the tight end on the inside where they were the previous play. They now go back to the outside, Aberderis. And so that's the balance that you've got to have. Wisconsin, so far, they've got 90 yards throwing it, and they've got 84 running it. So that's, that's, balance. that's balance, isn't it? 
Duckworth and Aberderis big plays on that drive. Russell Wilson on the money. And Brett Bielema sees his ball club go back on top. When Russell Wilson got here, one of the first players that he established a bond with was Aberderis. They've got a good relationship. And, and that friendship transfers onto the playing field. I, I can't say enough about Russell Wilson, how quickly he had adapted to being a Badger. Well, I think the biggest thing about his personality and how good a person he is, is he was named the captain right after he got here by his teammates. This wasn't something the coaches dreamed of. You mean it wasn't Brett saying, hey, you come here and I'll make you captain? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mostert is deep along with Hunt. Mostert had a 50-yarder earlier. Got another big one going here. What a great move to the outside. He's got a blocker in front. 30, 20. And Stumble goes down at the 15. 75 yards. How's that for two returns by the same guy in the first quarter? Well, I, we, we mentioned this on the previous kickoff return by Purdue. It was a big kick return. This is a poor job by special teams at Wisconsin. Poor tackling, poor coverage, not working to it. And I know Brett Bielema works hard and focuses on special teams. But Mike, you can't be a complete football team, a top three team, if you can't play all three phases of the game. Turbush looks to the middle and throws to his tight end, Crosby Wright, the young man who made the touchdown catch earlier, but he's sandwiched in between two defenders, Aaron Henry and Chris Borland, and this time he can't come up with it. But you saw all, that was the same play they scored on earlier. They exactly. just set him out wide, not set at the tight end hand down in the dirt. Somebody covered him this time. Turbush throws out in the flat. This complete to O.J. Ross. And Ross fights his way inside the five. Good block by Edison, number 13. Caleb Turbush is a player who has a strong, capable, more than capable arm. This man gets the ball to his playmakers quickly, and defenses don't know which one he's going to be throwing to. That's, the, that's to me, the multiplicity of this offense makes it tough to defend. He said, every game I play, I get a little bit more confident. He had not played quarterback since high school. Shavers is his running back. Turbush will keep. Pick up about a yard and a half. Lost the ball, but I think he was down before it came out. Dennis Kelly, his left tackle, recovered. They're playing without their starting left guard, Peters Dry, who had a back injury late in the week. Yeah, that's it. it you know, the question was, he down? Yes, I think he was down, and the, and the officials ruled it a fumble because the ball was recovered at the five as opposed to... Turbush where he went down at the two. That, that, that hurts there. Sure does. Can't understand that. Turbush after the play fake. Throws for the end zone. That was nearly intercepted by Chris Borland, the middle linebacker. Again, intended for Crosby Wright. Aaron Henry was also there defensively. That was a dangerous throw. Consider this about Turbush, though, Craig. He had one full week of practice before the season started. You know, as the number three guy, you don't get any reps. And all at once, he's thrown into the mix. He's done a really good job. Yeah, looking again, this was a critical non-call or poor call, whatever you want to call it. Ruling it a fumble, pushing the ball back to the five. Turbo swings it out in the flat. This is not going to go anywhere. Finellas came up from the corner. The pass was complete to Antavian Edison, but he didn't have a chance. He was the only white shirt out there with a lot of the red-shirted Badgers just waiting for him. Yeah, that's just nice. Nice blanket coverage. Blanket in the sense of back up everyone to the goal line and in the end zone, and when you see it in front of you, go get it. Now Carson Wiggs will come on and try a 25-yard field goal. And Wiggs knocks it through. So two tremendous kickoff returns by Raheem Mostert have led 
Purdue back into this game. They're down by only 14 to 10. He's had 123 yards on two kickoff returns. And now for our Big Ten update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Mm. Conference uh, very interesting here as we jump into the month of November. Hadn't it been an interesting day watching these scores? Iowa, in? Iowa upsetting, upsetting Michigan. Minnesota was right there with Michigan State. Ohio State was down to Indiana for a while. Yeah, can you believe that one? And look at Northwestern. They're ahead of Nebraska first quarter in Lincoln. Everything up for grabs today. When you see when you see all those scores coming in like that, it got to make you a little nervous if you're the favorite, doesn't it? <laughs> not going to be easy, and certainly Purdue has not made it easy on Wisconsin in this game so far. Special teams again, a negative for this Wisconsin football team that has allowed Purdue with the kickoff returns to score 10 points. Wiggs to kick it away. White and Aberderis are deep. On another beautiful day mm -hmm. in the Midwest for football. It's just gorgeous. Crisp, bright sunshine, yellow leaves. Aberderis driven two yards deep. He'll bring it out again. Same exact return. He's had three times. Cutting to the outside. He's at the 24 before he's taken down. With a win last weekend, it was Tony Stewart surging to within eight points of the lead, putting the pressure on Carl Edwards as they battle it out for the championship. Only three races to go. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Texas. Coverage on ESPN tomorrow afternoon at 2 Eastern. Well, happy hour was a little earlier today, and Carl Edwards was eight, and Tony Stewart ninth in competition. Ball on a sweep. They sealed the corner and ball picks up maybe nine, ten yards before he's knocked out of bounds. Now Wisconsin needs to just put a heavy dose, continue the heavy dose of running. They have 14 carries, 98 yards. And and with that offensive line and Monty Ball, and you know, until they stop you, keep keep bringing it. Second, call it two. Wilson throws the slant. Two makes the catch and slides it in front of Ricardo Allen. His father, Al, not only a great player of Wisconsin, but had uh, great NFL years with the Jets. During my era, I played against him. Jets and Patriots, that was oh, a big deal back then. He's not that old, is he? <laughs> <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I'm sure I'll pay for that one. <laughs> Wilson wants to throw on first down. Gets it out in the flat to Brady Ewing, his big fullback. That's his 12th catch. And Ricardo Allen forces him out of bounds. Uh, this is this is not what Purdue needs to to exercise defensively. If you if you do that kind of slow death, it will be a death. And I and I understand then. And when you rush and put pressure on West Russell Wilson, bad things can happen, but they got to get after him. Special teams has kept Purdue in this thing. The Boilermakers are down only four. First kickoff return results in a touchdown. The second one results in a field goal. And the Boilermakers within four at Wisconsin. Country music. Biggest night with amazing performances by all of your favorite stars. Brad Paisley and Carrie Underwood host the CMA Awards live Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on ABC. Love country music. Yes, I do too. Flew in here listening to little uh, Hank Williams Jr. and Johnny Cash this week. I was thinking more Lady Antebellum. <laughs> I, I, I have Lady Antebellum. I was I'm with that as well. Sugarland. Yeah. Wilson on the toss wow. to Ball. Wow. Little option action. And Ball down to the Purdue 32 yard line, gain of 21. We check in with Robert Flores. Robert. Sorry, Mike. Taco Bell Studio update. Stanford is 8 0 for the first time since 1951. They're leading 2 and 6 Oregon thanks to a touchdown run from Jeremy Stewart. 
Andrew Luck has thrown a pick here, but Stanford leading 7-0. Meantime, Oklahoma, number six in the country, leading Texas A&M 7-3, end of one. Thank you, Robert. Monty Ball is already over 100 yards, 9 for 104 in this ballgame. Now this is what Wisconsin does. They can just bulldoze you, and then Wilson carves you up on the other side. Everett Darris makes the catch. Ricardo Allen has to make the tackle. I watched Wisconsin practice earlier this season. Russell Wilson threw this ball time after time to Aberderis, working on the timing of it, the rhythm. Look at the pace. And again, the athleticism of Russell Wilson. Right? That all goes back to being a multi-sport guy. The baseball, the, the, the footwork, the mechanics. Ricardo Allen has already been a very busy defensive back. Six tackles. Five-man rush to chasing Wilson. The pass too high for Edward Darris. And Josh Johnson had the coverage that time on the sophomore for Wisconsin. Paul Chris was telling us that many times in a ball game, Russell Wilson will ask to get to the perimeter, that they're bunched up on the inside, right? To get to the outside. Let's let's soften them up. Then we'll come back to the middle of the field. But that's that's a mature quarterback and having a relationship with your coordinator. It sure is. Second and ten. Wilson on a little option toss to Ball. And Ball to the nine-yard line. A lot of the defensive players for Purdue right now are catching the running back. They're not delivering hits. Well, and the reason that you begin to catch is because you you don't know if it's a run or a pass. Somebody's running past you. Ohio State bunched the line of scrimmage. And they really were strong against the run. I think if you're defending Wisconsin, you have to be at the point of attack and hope you can peel out in coverage. They're not going to do you any favors either. 852 touches without a fumble. That's not just a lost fumble. That's without a fumble. Ball. Very close to a first down at the eight. Still fighting whistles at not blown. He's got the first down on second and third effort. Kevin Zeitler dropped his fanny and just kind of decided he was going to do a little leg press with about eight football <laughs> players in front of him. I've been in this weight room and worked out here at Wisconsin. It's it's a, an old school place. You get in there and, and there are no pretty boy weights. They're in there working out. <laughs> I said, where, where are the 15 pounders? <laughs> you got some iron in there, do you? <laughs> Ball to the goal line. You're going to mark him just short. Uh, again, this, this goes back to when they get in the red zone, 85% touchdowns, number one in the country, and it's because of the balance they have with the ground game. At this point here, it, it, not many folks could line up and stop them. If, you, if Wisconsin could come out and say, I'm going to run the ball right over here, and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Second and inches. Tight formation, they line up in the eye. Ball walks into the end zone for his 19th rushing touchdown of the year. Already has 113 yards on 12 carries to go with the touchdown. Monty Ball, 22. Be an interesting trivia question. How many are in front of him with touchdowns on the season? Three minutes, 59 seconds on that drive, and Wisconsin adds to its total 21 to 10. In fact, he's on a pace to set a Big Ten record. Here comes the kickoff return, though. Purdue's best play. Good point. Raheem Mostert, a true freshman from New Smyrna Beach, Florida, north of Jacksonville, has been the star for Purdue on offense. Started the game with a 50-yard kickoff return, then peeled one off for 73. The Boilermakers converted those two returns into 10 points.
And that's where they stand right now, down 21-10 at Wisconsin. Uh, unless he's tired of returning kicks, this could be another interesting one. Well, they've only had 58 yards of total offense on top of what he's done. This ball is boomed out of the end zone. That's one way to prevent Mostert from taking it back, kicking with the wind, and they'll have to start from the 20. Well, another little nugget to follow along in this football game here. Wisconsin in just barely a quarter, 250 yards. They're on pace for 825, 850 yards of offense. That's pretty good. <laughs> you see that from two teams, not often from one. Mm. Now, Purdue's offense, despite starting at their own 20, they have been effective today with the balance and spreading them around. They just got to keep the tempo. Bolden gets the carry, got a good block at the corner. Bolden to the 40, lowers his shoulder and drives nearly to the 50. Shelton Johnson got a free ride after a 28-yard gain. And I was going back watching the film and, and really studying Bolden, and I know he had a great season in 09 you talked about earlier. I could see his legs coming back. You can see the speed and the burst to get around the edge there. Aaron Henry has a blowout trying to chase him. And they're going to get about nine more on this one, the completion to Gary Bush. So we see now the strategy of Purdue. Offensive coordinator Gary Nord, after a big play, getting right to the line of scrimmage, going with that second quick snap before the defense can get set. He said Wisconsin does not have a defensive weakness. He said they are very, very sound. And Bolden would testify to that after the shot that Bo Allen gave him at the line of scrimmage and Kohut. And I, and I think at this point here offensively, Danny Hope has to be thinking, okay, we're not going to punt the football. We've, we've got two snaps to get a first down. Well, they've shown no indication that they can stop Wisconsin. Turn Bush changing the play. Left side. Floats this one down the sideline. A lot of contact there as Finellis was hand fighting with Siller. And I thought Finellis may have gotten away with one. Yeah, I, I, I do. I think there's a lot of contact. Absolutely, the receiver, Siller, could not continue his motion trying to get to the inside of the ball so he could make the adjustment to catch it. Yeah, they bring in uh, Jared Crank. I like the fullback, 48, good runner, a lot of power. Fourth and a short two, Shavers is the deep man. And Turbush wants to throw for it. Throws near sideline, and then the Purdue sideline, the Purdue bench, wants a flag. They're not going to get it. Marcus Cromarty with pretty good man-to-man -man coverage on the corner. The pass was intended for Ross. It was one of those back shoulder throws. You know what? I, I completely disagree with both the third and fourth down calls. You've got a one yard and a half. Yeah. And, and you've got the ability to run to get two yards. They could have done that. I had a much better chance than doing back shoulder throws. But I do believe that they got away there. Cromarty grabbed that arm and pulled the receiver. They may have gotten away with uh, pass interference on consecutive plays. Yes. But nonetheless, I mean, run the football. Get the first down. You've got to do that. You know, we're trying to cross him up on the first one and go for the home run, but the second one, a little tough. White, almost no resistance at the line of scrimmage, and James White will pick up nine. When you don't get touched until five or six yards downfield, it's pretty tough. And here's the drive chart, 76 yards, 75 yards, 41 the only time they stopped him, and then 63, three of the four drives for touchdowns. Well, I, I, you know, I... Based on that three out of four touchdowns, they're going to regret the third and fourth down calls and not getting that first down right there. White. Got to the outside into Purdue territory at the 48. Very close to the sticks for a first down. Now they're going to mark it back near the 49, so they'll be about a yard short on third and one. 
And for Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator and the play caller, this is a perfect situation. You know you can run for it, but you can also try to trick them and throw. Same formation they had where they just scored the touchdown a moment ago. Wilson will keep it and do it. Lost the football. No signal yet. The line judge comes in from the near side. He was the closest one to it in this Purdue ball. It looked like Russell Wilson got hit right in the mouth as he was starting to go down and just lost the football. Tawan Short, a heck of a player on that defensive line for Purdue, just 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 stuffed him. Yeah, that, that you know, ball came out. Was his knee were his knees down? That's almost 900 mm -hmm. touches in the first fumble. It's almost a simultaneous, you know. Take a look at that. Big play, Purdue defense. See if their offense can get back on the field and do something with it. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Toyota and Mountain Dew. It's different on the mountain. Every Friday before a home game, a group of Badgers boosts the spirit of children at the American Family Children's Hospital, a 61-bed hospital known for its pediatric heart program and emergency care. And Russell Wilson leads the parade every single week. The coaches say he asks to see the sickest kids, the ones that are in the most danger, and tries to lift their spirits. Here's the uh, review. review. The ruling on the field of a fumble stands as called. First down, Purdue. He really couldn't find anything indisputable to overturn it. His knee may have been down, but it, it, in the case that you see so often, he's blocked by other players. Yeah, just not indisputable video evidence. And I, and I think it's, again, it's easy to be the backseat driver, but you've got Monty Ball, James White, an offensive line. I know you're given a different look, but you certainly put it in their hands. You got a better chance of it not being fumbled and your quarterback not being hit. And I gave you an incorrect piece of information about the uh, touches without a fumble. That was for running backs. That did not include quarterbacks. So that streak is still intact. Purdue trying to go back to action. There's contact before the ball got there, and it's intercepted by Mike Taylor on the bounce. Cromarty knocked it away, it appeared. And again, no flag. Boy, they are letting them play in the secondary, aren't they? Yeah, there's a difference between letting them play and calling pass interference. I know there's a discussion going on right now with the officials, but there's no flag on the field. Live, it looked obvious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just... Cromartie got there at least a step early. Mm. So the third questionable call in the secondary results in a turnover and Wisconsin has it right back at its own 43. White. And the middle linebacker Dwayne Beckford makes the tackle. This kid is terribly undersized at 228 for a middle linebacker in major college football. Yeah, but you know what? When you, you talk about heart and play and passion, that's the beauty of college football, isn't it? He better have that. Yeah, he does. He's only got 228 to throw at him. <laughs> he's figured out over the years how to use all 228. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> White stays in on second and seven. Wilson to throw. A little pressure coming. Russell takes off. Got a block downfield out of bounds at the 42. Good block by James White is running back. Look at the instincts though when you when you talk about Russell Wilson's running ability years ago a couple years ago I think it was he got he got a Thursday night game we were doing he got drilled and had a concussion very yeah. severe and he's learned to live and play another down and and knowing that get to the outside that there's folks coming from the middle of the field that's going to that the Purdue's going to have to change up the way they're rushing they're going to have to stay in their lanes and not run beyond Russell Wilson. White getting a lot of action on this series. Comes in the line of scrimmage. Chased outside. It's the middle linebacker, Dwayne Beckford, again, who makes a tackle. Robert Flores with an update from the studio. Robert? All right, Mike. Next week, Stanford will host Oregon. 
Today they're taking on Oregon State and Andrew Luck after throwing an interception earlier rebounds with this beautiful touchdown pass to Griff Whalen. Stanford leading Oregon State 14 to 7. Nebraska losing at home to Northwestern second quarter 7 nothing. It's going to be one of those days isn't it. Mm. Second and short. Wilson second and long rather and he throws to Al Toon. Toon out of bounds to 27 another first down. Yeah, you just get the feeling that Wilson is so comfortable as the quarterback, either running or passing. And, in, and this one here stays right where he's supposed to be. You see the umbrella. Purdue doesn't rush beyond trying to contain Russell Wilson. So he says, okay, fine. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to throw on time and rhythm to my man outside, Nick Toon. 9 out of 12, 138 yards so far for Wilson. Trying to add to that total. Look at the protection. Now he takes off 10 and out of bounds at about the 7. Chased down by Beckford, who's been very active on this series. All right, so now Purdue's going to have to change it up. They're going to have to really collapse the pocket. They maintain their rush lanes, but then Russell Wilson just peels out. Nobody was open, so he runs the football. It's a very that, that, that's why Wisconsin's offense runs for 232 yards a game throws for 260 a game uh, it, there's so much balance there you can't defend it all almost impossible to stop it's going to be first and goal white to the six and turn back James White I admire a lot He's a team guy. Remember last year, he was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, over 1,000 yards rushing, and, and, and has accepted his role and not uh, belly ached about it. Understands that with his teammate Monty Ball that they're a dynamite one-two yeah. punch. Takes a lot of character. Second and goal from the five. Wilson, nice fake. Walks in. Gerald Gooden, number two, had his back turned, never saw it. Russell Wilson must have run seven or eight yards before Gooden even realized he had the ball. What a fake. And, and Kevin Zeitler, number 70, he's pulling to, to run interference. Watch the right guard. He'll come around, and he's looking for someone to peel and knock. Purdue wasn't even in the neighborhood to take a shot. That looked like Peyton Manning type of play action, didn't it? Except it didn't look like Peyton running. <laughs> no offense, Peyton. No, that's a good point. He would, he would agree with you. <laughs> All right, Wisconsin Purdue needs a, on a roll. Whew, Purdue needs a kickoff return. Welcome back to Madison. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Turbush has been held to 58 yards passing in the first half as a touchdown and a pick. Wisconsin has run the ball as you might expect and has racked up 317 yards in total offense with 616 still to go in the second quarter. And Wisconsin is still on that 825 yard pace for this football game. The sub block. Welch has it lined up to kick away again. Kicking with the wind. So perhaps Mostert won't get his hands on it. But that's what the folks here in Madison are hoping. Two yards deep. It's his partner, Akeem Hunt. And Akeem Hunt is out to the 28. Now for today's Aflac trivia question Wisconsin's Monty Ball. Leads the FBS with 22 touchdowns this season. Who holds the Big Ten record for touchdowns in the season? And how many? Good question. Good question. Great season. All right, Purdue's offense has to come out and, and, and one drive at a time here. They can get back in this game and get their spirits back in this game. And I think the tempo and the pacing of their offense has to, has to be up. Out of the eye this time, Bolton on the toss. 
fakes the flanker reverse. Now he reverses his field, looking for a block. Turbush gave him one on the corner. His wide receiver, Justin Siller, gave him one on the corner. That is a heck of an effort. Excuse me, Robert Marv, who is the new quarterback, was one of the guys who gave him the block. You might, rep you might remember that name, Robert Marv out of Tampa, where he had a brilliant high school career, went to Miami. He was going to be the next big star at Miami. It didn't work out. He transferred, got here to Purdue, and then injured a knee. He has heard it again since. And things have just never worked out for him. And there is Henry, who is the starting free safety, the senior from Immokalee, Florida. It's yeah. amazing how many Florida guys there are in the secondary of every single team in the country. No doubt. And, and that last run there by Bolden, it, it's another indication to me this young man has made it back. Yeah. That you can't you can't be that quick and direction changing like that without having your energy and your health 100 percent. Looks like Henry may have gotten his right foot stuck in the turf and tried to make a move defensively. And may have sprained it. He's certainly walking off very gingerly. Mm. Third leading tackler on this ball club. They can ill afford to lose him long term. He is a good football player. <clears throat> Purdue's offense, again, it, it's about tempo, and you see the, that how they fake the reverse, and the ball carrier ends up reversing himself. They force a defense to defend the entire field. And I and I, that was the thing that I was counting on from them, the multiplicity in this ball game to keep them in it. And as for Robert Marv, I had a chance to watch him down at Miami when he was really competing with Ja'Cory Harris for that job. I thought he had a great set of skills to, to a skill set that that could be a productive college quarterback, but it just never, uh, it never got together. Quarterback draw. They get maybe a yard. Craig, it just seems like one of those guys where it just didn't work out for him for whatever reason. And Purdue, in the last 21 games, has had five starters at quarterback, including Siller, who was a wide receiver now, and Turbush got a week's full of practice before he started the season. He was the third guy coming in. And that one's dropped by Edison. It's an incomplete pass. It was not a lateral. Yeah, it did. The ball did come forward. You know, and I, and I went back and I was watching how they use Marv and Turbush. And I know there's some things that they both do well. But I, in this game, in this particular game, I, I think I'd like to see Turbush in there and, and let him, in the first half at least, have a shot at it. Right. Continuity. Well, they said they want to play both. They want to keep uh, Robert Marv in the mix. But he certainly doesn't have uh, the kind of numbers that you would say, oh, sure, let's, let's give him a few series and make something happen. He's hit as he throws here, and the pass is incomplete. Good pass rush by Brendan Kelly, number 97. He's the guy who took over that defensive end spot for J.J. Watt, who was such an accomplished pass rusher. Yeah, and the way that they have replaced the J.J. Watt, the Watt numbers is through multiple folks. This is a very talented, deep defensive line. And by being able to rush for and get to the quarterback, dropping seven, good coverage, and you get a sack. Webster to kick to Abraderis. That great matchup of the nation's number one punter and the number 10 punt returner. And it's a fake. And then he kicks it on the run. I like that play. Yeah, you know what? I think he got I think he got nervous there at the end that he wasn't going to be able to get it, and so he decided to punt it. But I think he, he made the right decision. Well, I don't know. Go for it. They hadn't stopped Wisconsin yet. Wisconsin's on pace for a thousand yards. Keep running, young man. Now for the answer to our Athlete -like trivia question, which was Wisconsin's Monty Ball leading the FBS with 22 touchdowns this season. 
who holds the Big Ten record for touchdowns in a year and how many? The answer is 26. There's three players. Pete Johnson from Ohio State 1975. Anthony Thompson from Indiana 1988. Kajana Carter from Penn State 1994. You know, everybody talks about Russell Wilson, and uh, and he was at one time in the Heisman consideration. Monty Balls had a fantastic season. He's back in there after White had a couple of series. Ball across the 20 out to the 30. Albert Evans made the tackle. They have stopped Wisconsin, Purdue's defense, just once today forced one punt the other drives have gone for touchdowns Monty ball told me he lost 25 and as some people say 15 Monty told me 25 so the, the thing that he's done is he's enhanced his footwork his quickness of feet and the way he runs the football now he's he's able to carry it uh, more in a ball game he doesn't get fatigued the report on Henry the safety a sprained ankle twisted ankle uh, and they will evaluate him as the game goes on. He may or may not return. But you see how Monty Ball carries that ball high and tight. And he's got his shoulder pads out front over his feet. He makes good cuts. They're, they're, they're aggressive cuts. He goes from A to B in a hurry. He was the savior of the ground game last year when Clay and White were hurt late in the year. He had 777 yards in five games on runs just like that. Beckford had to chase him down, but not until he got to the Purdue 44-yard line. Another gain of 22 for Monty Ball, who's now carried 15 times for 156 yards. Craig, it's no wonder that James White replaced him the last two drives. He's got to be tired already. Uh, and, and, you know, early in the game, we talked about next level by the offensive lineman. Do you see them getting out front there? Ricky Wagner, he got to the linebacker level, pushing away, pushing aside the linebacker so that ball could run right by him. This athletic Wisconsin offensive line is in sync with a great runner in Monty Ball. Logan Link is the injured player for Purdue. Wisconsin has already rushed for 222 yards in this game, and we have three minutes and 56 seconds to go in the first half, 222. Yeah, well, Monty Ball, a big reason they've controlled the clock and the game. His vision is outstanding. This was the first play of the game, and he's followed it up with several big runs, wearing out Purdue's defense, and at the same time, setting up the play action pass. If the linemen and the linebackers cannot get off the blocks, you've got big guys running free in the secondary, and then you've got Wilson in play action. Being chased by Beckford. Throws. Pedersen makes the catch. Out of bounds at the 20. Now, just about the time you decide you're going to put that eighth and maybe ninth guy down in the box, they run some play action. That is the value of Russell Wilson. Watch this. The delay coming across by the tight end, Jacob Pedersen. This is a good football player. He's got good hands. You see how he's dragging. Russell Wilson decides to come back to the number two option, Pedersen. Pedersen's got to be more aware of <laughs> the width of the football field. <laughs> Throttle it down a little bit. First and ten from the 18. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Wilson over the middle, incomplete. It was intended again for Pedersen. Tried to fire one in there. He was covered pretty well. Tight ends have led this Wisconsin football team in receiving for the last five years. The most recent being Lance Kendricks, who was unbelievable at catching the football, and as well as splitting out, being a receiver. He could do it. He could do it all. Wisconsin has held the ball nearly 20 minutes, as opposed to slightly over seven for Purdue here in the first half. Second and ten. Wilson under pressure from behind. Throws to the end zone incomplete. And it looked like Wisconsin may have gotten away with a hold on that one as Gerald Gooden was giving pressure from the blind side. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. It looked like there was some serious jersey tugging taking place behind. Good's really, Gooden's really pushing hard. Ricky Wagner trying to hold him up there. I'm not sure what in the officiate from our point. I know it's a hard job. You got to see some of those things out there, though. Wisconsin certainly benefited from 
a couple of non calls on what looked like pass interference earlier. Blitz coming. Wilson hangs in here, throws to the end zone. There's a pass interference call. That was face guarding by Joe Holland, who never turned around. Purdue sideline is going to be really unhappy with that call after what happened when Wisconsin was playing pass defense. Pedersen, the intended target. Pass interference. Defense. Number 30. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, I think this here, again, this is just uh, doing all you can. Holland's running back with with Patterson puts his hands up and he makes the body contact in there. Wilson got what he wanted. First down from the three. Balanced in the backfield puts pressure on that defense. Ball. Adding to his total. 20 rushing touchdowns this year. Three receiving. 23 touchdowns, Craig. That's a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, we got a lot of time left in this game, Mike. <laughs> I think 26 is the record. It is. 16 carries, 159 yards. He's already within 19 yards of his career high. And they have barely slowed him down. Point after will make it 35 to 10 with 259 to go in the half. You know, I mentioned there's balance in the backfield. The formation is basic, but you've got the pistol look with the tailback straight behind the quarterback, and you've got offset blockers. The defense doesn't know which direction is the strength, so you've got to you've got to really you know, pick your poison on that deal. Craig, they're not even slowing them down now. Seven carries, seven plays rather. 87 yards took only two minutes, and Wisconsin. Keeping up with your theme has racked up 389 yards. Right now their pace is slowing. They're only about 800 right now. Well, I think what we're seeing right now is a reminder that this football team is two plays away or a few plays away yep. from being in the top five. Certainly the play against Michigan State, the Hail Mary. Those don't work very often. It was a miracle play that cost Wisconsin. And then the breakdown last week against Ohio State on a touchdown pass, 40 yards with 20 seconds to play. Those are crushing losses that takes them out of the national championship picture. But for me, it's the plays other than those. It's just the block punts. It's the play on a third down on yeah. a drive or a second down or a first down. It, to me, that's where they should never have been in those predicaments right it's the other ones that get the publicity because those are the, the big spectacular plays at the yeah. end of the game but I think the coaches would agree with you you should not have been in that position to start with but as it turns out they were and now with the wind blowing the ball over they're going to have to get a holder for Welch pops this one up And from the 13, Akeem Hunt. And Hunt taken down short of the 25-yard line by Josh Pepra. Coming up on college football tonight, Cincinnati and Pitt, 7 o'clock ESPNU. Number 9, South Carolina. Number 7, Arkansas on ESPN. Notre Dame, Wake Forest, 8 o'clock on ABC or ESPN2. Or you'll get number 14, Kansas State, against number 3, Oklahoma State on ABC or ESPN2. How's South Carolina holding it together? How do you lose your Brilliant running back Marcus Lattimore change quarterbacks. You're still in the top 10. Steve Spurrier's doing it with smoke and mirrors. A great defensive line. I mean, they've got a defense they over are. there. That's that, that defense getting it done. That's an interesting ball game. I mean, you got two SEC teams in the top 10 there, and it, it just doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Arkansas struggled lately in a, in a couple ball games. Well, it doesn't feel like it because they're named not named LSU and Alabama. <laughs> Good point. Good point. 
Two minutes, 31 seconds to go first half. There's that rotation. For Purdue, you just sort of hope you keep their interest right now because they're being pummeled 35 to 10. Yeah, and you know what? Here, get in, get, go and get to the end zone. Put a touchdown in the bank so that you can go to halftime feeling respected, respectful of yourself. Marv is the quarterback for the second straight series. And now a timeout called by Wisconsin timeout. on defense. Wisconsin. I think this is probably exactly what the Wisconsin coaching staff wanted to see today. After those two heartbreaking defeats, you come back and you just explode all over somebody. And they've still got a shot at this. You see Wisconsin with a two and two record, tied with Ohio State in the loss column. But Penn State, even though they're five and zero, they have a brutal finishing schedule, including playing Wisconsin. So they still th think they have a shot. There's a lot of ball to be played left in the Big Ten. And, and like today, Michigan losing to Iowa. Uh, Nebraska, I think they're, they're down. They're right down at the right half. Yeah. There's some strange things happening today. Marv out of the shotgun. We'll give it to Bolden. And Bolden didn't have a chance. Took it to the outside. There were three defenders waiting for him, led by Nzegwu. And Desmond Southward came up from the corner. Now one of the Badgers is down, and that's Nzegwu. Well, he's got a banged up foot that he's been yep. nursing and didn't uh, practice all week. Yep. You know, you get outside and put a lot of torque on that foot. Maybe looking at his knee. Both he and Kevin Claxton, the outside linebacker, were unable to practice because of very similar injuries to their feet this week. And of course, this is a time of the year, uh, the ninth game of the season, where everybody's pretty much banged up anyway. Yeah. Some just worse than others. Yeah, if you're playing, you've got something that's bothering you. Yeah. And, and that's, that's again, to my point in these... It, at any level of football, but especially in these AQs and these conferences with these big, fast, talented, deep rosters. Be second down, about 12 yards to go from the 34 yard line. Four man rush. Marv hangs in the pocket, throws underneath, and completes it to Grave Sandy. But not for much. And it's a positive, though. You know, it's 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 moving forward here, and that and you don't want to try to throw hail marys, kind of chip, chip away at it. Mars going to take off, try to run for the first down. He'll have it out to the 48. And Ethan Armstrong made the tackle, second string linebacker. He and Claxton split a lot of time at that weak side linebacker, or at the strong side linebacker spot. Good player. And then this is the point here you don't have to waste a timeout yet. You're getting close where you start using your timeouts, but one or two more plays at the most before you start using those. Marv under center. He wants a screen back the other way. They do this very well. Bolden. Inside the 30, 25, 20 to the 18-yard line. One of the best screen teams in the country is Purdue. Schmeig, Panfile, and Kelly all out in front of Ralph Bolden. Yeah, last week in their in their loss, they were really good with this. And Gary Bush had a touchdown off of the screen. That's the beauty of this offense, though. You don't know which one of these receivers is going to get it in these screens. Here comes the blitz. Marv on the roll throws and this one is incomplete intended for Antavian Edison. He was well covered at the goal line that stops the clock at the 52 second mark. Purdue still has all three of its timeouts remaining. Yeah, You know what I, I made the comment coming on air today about Purdue having the ability and how did they beat Illinois. How can they compete in this game. You see 
bits and pieces here and there at Purdue's football team offensively. Sure do. You know, even on defense, you've seen some occasionally. But they can't afford playing against a Wisconsin team not to do it play in and play out. Marv flanker screen to Siller. It's a toss back to the tailback at Keem Shavers. What a beautifully designed play that was. Hook and lateral. There you go. And I like this. This is this is a Gary Nord offensive coordinator dialing it up at the right time. You got a defense that's swarming to the ball carrier. You've been successful on your screens. You've been talking about the screens. You run a hook and lateral. That's great timing and execution. There's nothing tricky about that. That's execution. First and goal. Ball came loose, knocked out of bounds as Akeem Shavers was diving toward the end zone, but he forgot the pigskin. Ball's in the wrong arm. The wrong arm. It was. Get the football on the outside so you can use your shoulder pad to, de to deliver a blow and protect the football. Helmet comes in, arms can get to it, put the ball on the outside. Chris Borland gave him a shot. 33 seconds to go, second and goal. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen. Marv in the gun. Looks near side, throws, incomplete. There's a flag. Finellis and O.J. Ross made contact. 26 million. Pass interference. Defense. Number 26. Well, if I'm a the penalty occurred in the end zone. The ball by rule is placed on the two yard line. Automatic first down. If I'm a Wisconsin defensive back, I play a tight two until they call it. And, and, and here now for Purdue's offense being down on the two yard line with the clock an issue, timeouts, you've got three. This is where having the ability for your quarterback to run, the quarterback run gives you the plus one scenario. I like their chances better at running it in than throwing it. But think back earlier in this game on third and fourth down when they were one yard to go, they were unable to get it. First and goal to the corner, dives, touchdown, Justin Siller. The former quarterback turned wide receiver, this time turned running back, gets the score with 24 seconds on the clock. Now the tight end on the right side there, Crosby right just enough of the outside linebacker to push him back to allow to allow the receiver Siller to get around to the end zone. That's a nice job of Purdue getting in the end zone. And that was another nicely designed play as well. Point after is good and Purdue makes it 35 17. Here's Robert Flores Robert. All right, Mike, Oklahoma was leading Texas A&M 13-3, under two minutes to go in the first half in Norman when Ryan Tannehill scrambles outside of the pocket and connects with Ryan Swope, who gets behind the secondary. For Swope, that is the longest reception of his career, 79 yards. And late in the first half, A&M losing 13-10. Meantime, at the half in Lincoln, Northwestern on top of Nebraska, 7-3. Well, that is a shot. Well, you know what, Northwestern, Dan Persa, 9 of 14 in that ball game, 79 yards. That offense, that team's a dangerous football team. But at Nebraska, yeah. you just don't expect it. And, and, and a good ball game going on between A&M and Oklahoma. And, and for A&M, they really probably should prefer to be down in this game going in at halftime <laughs> their three losses they've always been ahead and they can't hold it six they're probably six quarters away from being undefeated and a, a top five team exactly well we've had 52 aggregate points scored in this half and it's not over yet 24 seconds to go white and Aberderis are deep squib kick Taken by one of the up men, and he'll go down at the 29-yard line. It is Brian Wozniak back up tight end. Monty Ball has had quite an afternoon, and he's still got some time to play out in the pasture. He's had runs of 44, 11, 21, 17, 22. 
He's been all over the place. Don't stop now. <laughs> yeah, and I ran out of air. An offensive line in sync, in rhythm with Monty Ball and the play action and the throwing of Russell Wilson. See how aggressive they want to be with 21 seconds to go. Set up the screen to White. Makes one man miss. Makes another man miss. Gets out of bounds across the 40 yard line. A lot of different guys have had success running the ball here. I think if you're a running back looking for a place to go play college football, <laughs> <laughs> if you could get in. <laughs> Does you know? Does this tell you one thing though? That that offensive line opens up enormous holes for these guys to. I mean, as good as the backs are, yep. the offensive line is just wonderful. And Paul Chris, that offensive coordinator, yep. is the glue. Keeps it all together. He makes it work. Wilson. Room to run. Pushed out of bounds at about the 42, but only six seconds left. Chance for maybe. Quick pass to the sideline or a quick pass over the middle. Use one of your timeouts. I'd exercise the demons. The Hail Mary has been against Wisconsin. I'd go for it. Throw the ball down. Timeout. Well, they've got Wisconsin. a guy, Philip Welch, this is their who had a 61 yard field goal in the spring game. So, certainly with the wind, he would have a chance at something monumental here if they give him a shot at it. Well, Russell Wilson today has been money with his decision making both when to throw the football and when to take off his running Pedersen there the tight end throwing a bullet to Aperderis. You know the running of the football the play action the discipline the composure that's that that's all when you talk about experienced quarterbacks that play action right there that that further frustrates the defense one more thing they have sure. to watch ball fake. Well, I'd like to see the attempt for a long field goal, but that's not going to happen. So, well, let's see if they go with the short pass to try to get him in that position. And right now, Purdue has got three defenders back at the 15-yard line, so they're expecting something long. Now they go to White, and White gets out of bounds at the 35. They're going to have a shot at the long one. That's just good execution. That's a good conversation sure on the sideline with your coach, and and making sure everyone understands down and distance, time on the on the clock. For the receiver to know what he's supposed to do with it. Welch is one of the most accurate kickers in the history of Wisconsin football, better than 76%. But he's got that huge leg with that long kick of 61 in the spring game. This is from 52 with a breeze at his back. He got plenty of leg to get this one there. That had 10 yards to spare. Beautiful execution by the Wisconsin offense. They got just enough yards to give Welch a legitimate shot, and he came through. Well, Wisconsin 425 yards. They're on pace for 850. At the half, our score, Wisconsin 38, Purdue 17. When we come back, the studio will catch you up on everything at halftime after these messages. We're at the half in Madison, Wisconsin, and it's 38-17. The Badgers on top of the Boilermakers of Purdue. Welcome back, everybody. If you're Purdue and somebody told you you'd have 17 first half points, you'd feel pretty good about this. But they don't feel pretty good about this right now. Not coming out of that locker room. You know, this is a football team that has to come out, and depending on field position, they have to consider going for it on fourth down. This this possession right here for Purdue to get them back into the game is a must. And so if they have decent field position, I think they need to go for it on fourth down. They hadn't stopped Wisconsin the whole game. No. What makes you think they're going to start doing it now? Well, the good news is Wisconsin has to kick off to them, which has been the biggest offensive plays they have had. The bad news is Wisconsin is kicking with the wind. Be interesting to see whether Robert Marv comes out or Caleb Turbush comes out to start the third quarter for that Purdue offense. And Danny Hope, who's trying to get back in this game. 
uh, and, and for Wisconsin, the way they keep Purdue out of it is to continue to have the balance beginning with the running game. Mostert and Hope are deep. Mostert, who'd had two huge returns, brings it out. Boy, this guy's dynamic. He's across the 40-yard line. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, Greg. Well, there has to be a little bit of it involved with the kick return unit of Purdue, but this has been about Monty Ball on the ground, and that near 10-yard average per carry is crazy, and the balance that Russell Wilson has provided. We've seen Russell Wilson run the ball several times, adding another element of, of, of trouble for that Purdue defense. On a lot of these runs, Ball's been five, six yards downfield before anybody lays a hand on him. That offensive line is really opening up some gaping holes. Caleb Turbush back in there. Over the first down running play with Akeem Shavers and Mike Taylor, who was the leading tackler on this ball club and ninth in the country in tackles, made the stop. Man, Both Mike. Taylor and Borland are up there with tremendous tackle no, uh, numbers, both in the top 15 in the country. Mike Taylor becoming a more of a vocal leader for this football team and kind of out of character for him, but he is a heck of a ball player. Turbush play fake goes to his tight end Crosby Wright, who caught that first touchdown pass, and they're down to the Wisconsin 42. And this it, is a very multiple offense for it Purdue. It really is, Mike, I, and, that, and that's what makes him tough to defend. We've seen now two or three times for Wright that play has been money. I mean, the linebackers looking in the backfield for the running game and forgetting the tight end. Turbush with time sort of side on that one. It's incomplete. Good coverage by Shelton Johnson. Got a hand on it intended for Edison. And that's Edison who's down. Yeah, I think this is a this is good coverage. The ball coming out late, but it almost like Edison, his hand got swatted. Or as he reached back for it. Oh, the ball may have hit him on the edge. On his extended fingers after he stumbled, reached out. Hmm. And they're working on that right hand. Yeah, it's the elbow. They're 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 looking down at his elbow in that in that elbow range. Obviously in pain there. Wisconsin's multiplicity on, on offense, though, was the thing that stood out for me in their win, upset win over Illinois. And the fact that they'll run reverses, they'll fake reverses, they do the screen game. There's always something that they yeah. have in their pocket that makes the defense have to defend the whole field. He may have hit that nerve in his elbow that uh, makes your hand go dead for a while, the ulnar nerve. Uh, why, did, why did they ever, whoever came up with the idea that that's called the funny bone? It ain't funny, no, is it? Nothing funny about that. They'll have to come out for a play at least. But here's that four down range now that they're in that I mentioned coming out yeah. of the locker room. Turbush will try to take off. Dives forward to the 36. They need to make the 31. Chris Borland got him, so to bring up a third and five, and I think you're right, Craig. Right now, you've got two downs to make five once you're in this turf. A a absolutely, and I like that, the decision by Turbush. The ball was not there. The receiver was covered, and he immediately tucked it and picked up the four or five yards. Swings it out in the flat and too strong and a little wide for Akeem Shavers. That's not as easy a throw as it looks, but he led him a little bit too far. He should have thrown the ball sooner. The ball needed to be softer and sooner. Yep. You know, th there was the clear out on the, on, the, on the flat, and the back was the check down, and that's the play. That's going to get you the first down. Do it quicker. And you really need to throw it to the back and not lead him because he's running this sort of this uh, half circle. Big play here. Fourth down. They need five yards. Can they keep the drive alive? And they'll go with the handoff to Shavers, and Shavers is cut down at the 35-yard line by Taylor. Nice analysis by the Wisconsin defense. 
Now, I understand, Mike, what they were thinking there on that call. They thought they had the leverage where they could block down and allow Shavers to get to the outside. Boy, big stop there by Wisconsin. Missed opportunity by Purdue. They got the kick return, and they couldn't do anything with it. Wisconsin has the football. They have racked up 38 points against that Purdue defense. Thanks in part to Monty Ball's tremendous performance. 158 yards averaging 9.9 .9 yards a carry. He has two touchdowns on the ground. That gives him 20 for the season on the ground. Three more receiving. He is within one of the school records set by Brown, Brian Calhoun back in 05 and only three away from the Big Ten record of 26. Purdue has not even been able to slow them down on some series. Ball again. Gaping hole straight up the middle. Across the 59 and the 43. Will Lucas made the tackle, and that big offensive line, Craig, just engulfed everybody. Yeah, coming right at you, we'll show you. This, there's nothing fancy about this. It's straight ahead, man-to-man -man blocking. And, and Ball with that 25 pounds lighter body bursting through. Gets right through. Good job blocking. Fullback does his job. He wasn't touched until he was 10 yards into the secondary. 179. Now make it about 185 yards. A career high for Monty Ball out of Wentzville, Wisconsin. The 5'11 junior. Second. I like him too. Monty Ball's a humble young man. Very hardworking and understands good. The one thing Bielema says he will not overshadow is if a kid doesn't have good character, he tries to find out from his other players around the team when they come on visits whether or not they're good guys. If they're not, he stays away from them. Well, you like to hear that. Ball again, not touched. Stumbled as he got inside the 30. You got to tip your cap to the offensive line. When you're running back and go 10 yards before the first defender even touches it, Look at the next level there. Travis Frederick, Kevin Zeitler, the two guards getting to the linebackers three yards down the field. I mean, allowing that big bubble and that surge to take place. How many guys in this country would like to run behind that offensive line? Look at this. Monty Ball. 29 yards. He is now over 200 for the ball game. 223 on 20 carries. He's run for three touchdowns today. Gives him 24 for the season. Ties the school record. And he's not done. Come back. Let's draw this thing up and let's show you the blocking in front. It's Monty Ball getting to the house, but there are guys up front doing their job. ESPN's College Football brought to you by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL, and the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. Before this was Camp Randall Football Stadium, 1917, this was Camp Randall itself. 70,000 troops went through Civil War training here to prepare for the war between the states. This has been a war if you're on defense for Purdue and you are being overwhelmed by superior forces. <laughs> Particularly Monty Ball. That Camp Randall Stadium, though, it it is... It's a privilege to come here. I love doing games it's here. fun, isn't it? Yeah, great, great town, city, atmosphere, vibe. The student section here has as much fun at a game as anyone in America. Well, there, we the get band is great. The fourth quarter. Band is great. Nothing bad about it. 
Let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate, Craig. Well, this is the way you use your hands legally and, and perform an assault on a defense. I want to watch and show you all the bodies here. Look at the execution. Every man doing his job, drawn up like it's supposed to be done in the meeting room. Look at the room for Monty Ball to run through. He'd be the first to tell you, thank you guys. Everyone doing their job. Russell Wilson and the other back fullback carrying out their fakes. And that that is why this offense is on pace now for 950 yards today. They're going straight up the middle time after time after time and the linebackers are nowhere to be found. They want to screen. And this time Wisconsin sniffs it out. Excellent defense by Kevin Claxton number nine who is playing with a sprained ligament in his foot and a broken bone in one hand and still sniffed that out and made the stop. Now Purdue, Purdue's football team you know they just they've got to maintain their focus on doing as best they can. This is a team that has upside. There are a number of young guys on this team that are playing and Caleb Turbush as a junior has to continue to build upon his experience of playing against a top ball start top football team offense number 64 half the distance to the goal remain second down it's Kevin Panfile who was given the start today because Peters dry normally the starting left guard was left at home with a back injury this is going to drop Purdue to four and five and really damage their chances to get back in the bowl picture. Turnbush intercepted by Borland. And Borland back to the five yard line, his second pick this year, and he returned it for 11 yards. This play has been successful multiple times for Purdue. Chris Borland, a very smart football player. Watch how Borland, he's over here. Watch how he does his drops and reads the quarterback's eyes. Knows where the play is going. He's exactly in that passing lane for the crossing route. That's almost like a robber position. Quarterback can't account for him because he's sliding out of the peripheral vision of the quarterback right into the passing lane. James White gets a chance at tailback on this series. First and goal from the five. White walks in. Touchdown to Wisconsin. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't think Wisconsin's going to be subject to a last-second touchdown that beats them today. No, they'll take care of business here. And, you know, it's th this is not running the score up. And, and this no. is Purdue having to make a tackle. At the end of the day, they got to, it's blocking and tackling. Go execute. If you're running straight up the middle and the other team knows you're running straight up the middle and they can't stop you, that's their problem, not yours. You can't take a knee with 11 01 to go in the third quarter. No. Brett Bielema will empty the benches, though. He'll let some guys come in and play. He'll be a good sport about it. May not make a difference. It's 52 17. Well, the running backs for Wisconsin have just feasted on this Purdue defense, and they're up 52 17. Ball and White racked up incredible yardage totals. And the last touchdown, courtesy of the interception, that set it up. Mostert and Hunt deep again. Mostert two yards deep. Hunt tried to stop him. He says no dice. And he's out to the 21. Well, it's been an interesting year in the Big Ten, hasn't it? Michigan State and involved in some real thrillers. A Hail Mary against Wisconsin, a loss at Nebraska. Michigan, the Wolverine revival under Brady Hoke. And Penn State undefeated in the Big Ten. Tough road ahead for them. Ohio State wins over Illinois and Wisconsin. It's not over either. No, it isn't. You look at what Penn State has accomplished and what they have left. The season is far from over. Shavers. Couple of yards. Claxton made the tackle. Now here are the remaining schedule. This is what we're talking about with Penn State. They're 5-0. Oh. 
they have to play Nebraska at Ohio State and at Wisconsin. Wisconsin is hoping they'll win out and they they can win two of those games or Ohio State can lose or excuse me Penn State can lose two of those games. Ohio State now at three and two at Purdue at Penn State at Michigan. That's not easy either. Wisconsin would seem to have the easier road not easy but easier. Yeah, and I think after the performance that they're having this afternoon, the confidence will, will be back on track. All of the thoughts of what yeah. if this team could recover, they're back. And, and it will be still a challenge, some of the games that they have in front of them. Home field has really made a difference. It seems even more than normally. Still got that defense out there. Borland, Mike Taylor. Third and ten for Turbush. Bolden back in as his running back. Four man rush. Turbush flushed. Throws underneath to his tight end. Gabe Holmes makes his first catch of the year. And he's got a first down. You see the arm of Turbush? I mean, he's got the spin of the ball. Made a bad play on the last series, came back, and obviously he's forgotten about it. Came out and got him a first down. It's the little victories. When a team's getting pounded like this, somehow you have to fight through it and figure out as, a, as players and leaders on the field to tell your teammates, you got to do your job. We got to compete. They go with trips left here and then run right with Bolden. And Bolden spins out of a couple of tackles. He's not done. Let's check in with Robert Flores. Robert? Well, Mike, earlier you are talking about the leaders division of the Big Ten. In the Legends division, Nebraska started the day in a three-way tie for first, but they're trailing Northwestern at home. But Taylor Martinez finds Tim Marlowe 14 to 10 Northwestern early fourth quarter in Lincoln. And mind you, Michigan has already lost today. Boy, oh boy, what a day in the Big Ten. All leading up to that huge showdown so-called game of the century tonight. Mm. Blitz coming, Turbo hit as he throws, but it's complete to O.J. Ross. Ross still on his feet. Down to the 42-yard line and pushed out of bounds. Pat Muldoon had the charge on the quarterback, Caleb Turbush, Here's and hit him just as he unloaded. Here's where you, you gain respect from teammates and coaches. Watch the shot Turbush takes. Hangs in there and knows he's going to get drilled and delivers a very well thrown ball. And O.J. Ross, who came into this ball game with 25 receptions, I like the way he runs after he catches it. They're, I mean, these are the positive things you see on a football team. Boy, after that hit, you just knew Turbush was going to hand it to somebody. He wasn't going to get a bell rung again. I, I go back into this game here and, and almost. Any game you talk about, there are a handful of critical plays that aren't made that end up being the difference. And when you let the other team get on, you're in trouble. I, I think back to the third and fourth and ones that they had. Remember that early in the game? And for they, sure. And they threw the ball instead of running for it. I, I, yep. I think back to that. Um, just a couple of critical moments that they didn't take advantage of, and Wisconsin stayed on a roll. Ross. Boy, that was well defended by Fennel as the corner number 26. Stood his ground, closed, made a good stop. Yeah, See, Craig, I think you're right on that series where it was third and two and they threw the ball twice mm -hmm. and didn't get it. Yep. And 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 here again now, I'm, I'm calling maybe a, one of their screens that they're really good at. A bubble screen to the wide side of the field. Block it, execute it, pick up the five or six so that you can go for it on fourth down. Shavers is in the backfield with Turbush. Wisconsin shows blitz. They back out of it. Turbush had it batted down by Muldoon. He telegraphed the throw, and Muldoon did the smart thing, knowing he wasn't going to get to the quarterback, got the hands up, and blocked it. Pat Muldoon, 6'3, 260. Shows some athleticism there. Hand-eye coordination of seeing in the route where the ball is going to be thrown, but that was one of those plays. If it's completed, it picks up five or six yards and gives you a chance on fourth down. 
Wiggs is on to pooch punt. He's the guy that handles the short kicks. End over end. Fair catch made at the 16 yard line. 25 yard punt, but inside the 20. Well, we, we talked about in the James game the next level and the blocking of the linemen getting up, allowing Monty Ball to go. I mean, it, we, we, we take you from, from video game to reality. This was perfect execution. And Monty Ball bringing to life the James game. But it's that offensive line up there that continued to get down the field. And it's not over. You see hat on hat with the defensive linemen and then the linebackers. White gets a crack at picking up some yards on this series. He's number 20. White off the right side and Beckford was right there. Flag is down, may have gotten the face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number three. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So when they do make a tackle, it results in a penalty. We mentioned Beckford at 226 pounds in the middle. And he's given up as much as 100 pounds to some of these offensive linemen that he's got to get around. Mm. No easy task. So spotted outside the 30, first and 10, Wisconsin. White. Yeah, I and think Beckford is there again. Yeah, I think this game here, the way Brett Bielema plays it now, and, and, and really even for Purdue, it turns into a rugby match. You know, just ball them up in the middle of the field and uh, not take any chances and. Keep the clock moving and make sure the. Uh, but nothing nasty goes on at the yeah. bottom of the scrum. But there was there were a couple of weeks ago whenever Wisconsin was up in there in that top five, six, seven category. They needed impressive routing wins for for the uh, eye candy of the voters. Sure. Wilson. Nice fake goes to the fullback Brady Ewing. Ewing breaks a tackle. He's got a first down near midfield. And I like Ewing. This guy they say could be the governor of the state. In high school, ran for over 2,000 yards, so he's not just a fullback blocking guy. See the motion that he does, it clears him there. I mean, that's just a good job of running, very strong. Wisconsin now 512 yards, 9.1 per snap. Nine point one a snap is pretty impressive. Wilson again sidesteps the defender now takes off and dragged down from behind. Solid tackle by Gooden. Well, they've had an impressive day, Wisconsin offensively, yeah, but coming in, this is no surprise. This is a very good offense and it's all because of that offensive line that allows Russell Wilson to be efficient and all this stuff. I mean it's it starts up front. 24 first downs. The totally dominated Purdue. White may have cut the wrong way on that one right ran right into Will Lucas the weak side linebacker. If he had stayed inside he had some more running room. Interesting keep up with that Northwestern game here so there so in the fourth quarter they're over Nebraska leading by four right in Lincoln in Lincoln Even the teams that won today the favorites struggled But a couple of upsets And there's a move across the line by Bruce Gaston was he induced or did he get offside? Offside. And it was Gaston's mistake. Number 90. Contact in the neutral zone. That'll be enough. Five for the yard first penalty. Down. The main third down. Brett Bielema has a secret weapon in Bob Bostad, the offensive line coach. 
He teaches what he knows, what he understands. And this offensive line, the production they have on the field is a result of what they're taught in that meeting room. And, and the development of players, bringing them in here. Yeah, they're big guys, but it's one thing to be, to be big. There are a lot of big guys, but not all the big guys can run like these Badgers offensive linemen in play. No, these are big, bad, athletic guys. Bad Quite. in the good sense. Yes. <laughs> bad is an attitude. Well, let's get an update on that Nebraska game for Robert Flores. Yeah, Mike, that score has changed. Northwestern playing without Dan Persa, who injured his shoulder. This is Kane Coulter up top to Jeremy Ebert. 81-yard touchdown and Northwestern leading 21-10 on the road, fourth quarter. Mike. Oh, they are not going to be happy in Lincoln, Nebraska. No, that guy without Persa. Coulter, 4 of 6, 115. Mm. Wilson. Under pressure, what a great move to get away by time. And now he's nailed and taken down around the 48-yard line. And that's the middle linebacker again, Beckford. You get him out in space, he's a pretty good tackler. And I tell you what, the, you, you don't want to lose your quarterback in a route on a mishap. Ooh, right around the neck. Mm. Mm. Still only third quarter. It's 52-17 Wisconsin. They're facing the first third and really long I can remember in this ball game. Blitz coming. Wilson under pressure throws underneath to White and White. More negative yardage. Joe Holland, what a heck of a play by the team leader on defense. Worked his way up. Now he's probably number 19 all time yep. at Purdue in tackles. That's open space. That that's that's what an offense tries to do is get one on one. They want to win space. But a defense has to learn to win in space too. And Holland did it. This will be the first Wisconsin punt since we were only seven minutes into the game. Grave Sandy is deep. Returnable line drive kick and Grave Sandy muffed it. Looked like he had the best shot to get it back, and apparently he did. The officials trying to unpile him, and Grave Sandy was able to recover after a punt of 42 yards. Well, the punt has been an interesting adventure here at Wisconsin. The shield up front works. They've had two punts blocked recently. Both went for touchdowns eventually. I'm sure they've done a little work on that Punt protection. Hey, you get them blocked two weeks in a row. Something's going to change. So Purdue will start from its own 13-yard line with a minute 19 to go third quarter. Turbush in the backfield with Bolden. And they'll give it to Edison who was injured early and Robert Marv has checked in as the quarterback on this series. Yeah, I think they're going to rule it down. Edison, he's cutting back. When you cut back into that traffic over there, you know there are going to be a lot of defenders coming from that direction. Mm. Flags with 35 seconds to go in the court. False start. Offense, number 82. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. ABC Tuesday is the new night for big laughs with Tuesday's number one new comedy, Last Man Standing. Tim Allen, a man among women, a lot of women raising three daughters. Good luck with that. Last man standing all new Tuesday, 8, 7 central on ABC. One of the other problems with switching quarterbacks is that everybody has a different cadence. Mm, mm. And people tend to move. Mm. False start. Offense, number 51. 
five yard penalty remains second down. Well, one of the things that's a, that is a little bit puzzling is Robert Marv is a fifth year senior. He is obviously not going to be the future of this program. Ter Bush and Henry, if he can come back from injury, are. And yet Robert Marv getting significant playing time. And it's. If you're trying to be. If you're trying to say to Robert Marv, you know, we really appreciate what you did and you deserve some playing time. That's one thing, but you wonder what else you're be, uh, being able to accomplish here. That's going to be the last play of the third quarter. This game has been taken over by the Badgers at home. They're up 52 17. It's one of the great traditions in college football jump around at the start of the fourth quarter here at Wisconsin. Everything in this building is shaking, including this booth. And quite honestly, it feels like the earthquake we had on the East Coast a few weeks ago, where things just keep moving when they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you wisely decided to sit down during that I break. Did. I did. <laughs> oh, that's awesome watching that. If you can't have fun under this circumstance, you're not going to have fun. It's almost like, look, and there are a few fans now who are going to the exit rows. They ready. waited for jump around, though, Absolutely. didn't they? Absolutely. That's tradition. Way to go. Marv will take off. And throw. Nice job. Got it to Ross. Flag is down. He may have been across the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of down. <laughs> Marv laughing. Yeah, I was trying to draw you up. The quarterback threw the ball when he was beyond the line of scrimmage. The penalty is five yards from the spot of the pass. Loss of down, fourth down. That's the biggest part of that penalty is the loss of down. You can see it around the, he's way, way beyond it. That will tend to draw the defenders up once you go beyond the yes, line of scrimmage. <laughs> And it will tend to free up some guys in the secondary. Abraderis waits near midfield for Webster's punt. He try to show off his leg from here and gets off a poor kick, but they're going to blow the play dead. Team never got set together. Ball start. Offense. Number 21. Half the distance to the goal. Remains fourth down. Purdue's offense pretty much coming apart. They've had three snaps and four flags on this possession. And now it's uh, Carson Wiggs to punt. A bouncer, Abraderis got a block at the corner. Needs to make a man miss and did. Got another block. Abraderis still on his feet. Lost the ball, but it's out of bounds. Fenelis may have gotten it before it got to the sideline. The 24 yard return after a line drive low kick of 47. You know, I want to be special. You know, my dad always told me to, you know, don't be common, be uncommon. Wilson flips it to the end zone, touchdown. I'm just trying to be the best football player I can be. Flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run. Has Duckworth wide open. You know, I'm trying to be the one of the best players in college football. And, you know, that's my mindset every week. Wilson on the roll, throws back at the end zone after Darius touchdown. 14 minutes and 12 seconds to go in this ball game, and Wisconsin dominating Purdue. And Russell Wilson, another superb day. He has been everything Wisconsin could have possibly asked for in a transfer. 
left NC State after a brilliant four year career under that NCAA rules that allows guys with eligibility remaining to go to a new school if they have a graduate program their old school did not. Wilson inside the 10 driven out of bounds at the eight yard line. And you can't find anybody, Craig, that has a negative word to say about Russell Wilson, not even the people he left at NC State. Yeah, we've, we've followed and covered Russell Wilson a long time. He's been consistent. The players, his teammates, his coaching staffs have all respected him. And his orchestration of this offense, coming in in his first year, within months picking it up, the terminology, the, yeah. the, the, the players, and, and what they do well individually he's made everyone around here a better player obviously a very bright kid play fake Wilson out in the flat to white nice cut right down to the one saving tackle by Beckford again watch the athleticism on the release of Russell Wilson and this is that baseball body uh, you know this is the, the to heck with the mechanics. I don't have time for mechanics winging it out there with some velocity. It's like a shortstop in the hole. <laughs> you think you think Brett Bielema and Paul Chris the OC are looking for that next lottery. Absolutely. Ticket. <laughs> Who's their free agent going to be this year. If you win one why not win another one. <laughs> White. Cuts out cuts back touchdown. So White getting a little of glory. Between he and Monty Ball, they have just torn up Purdue's defense. And even the happiest of the faithful are headed for the parking lot with 12.59 left. Some of these good folks may be home before this one's over. Oh, it's over. <laughs> I mean, technically oh, over. Oh, oh, gotcha. Till the clock runs out. 59 17 Wisconsin. ESPN's College Football is presented by Five Hour Energy, the no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. Visit 5HourEnergy.com and in part by Volkswagen, the all-new Volkswagen Passat. That's Das Auto. Right across the street from Camp Rambles, Randall Stadium, Mickey's Dairy Bar. It's famous for its legendary breakfast menu and its huge portions. Some of the best milkshakes you'll ever find. Woo, look Our at that. Our colleague Todd Blackledge did one of his features over there and just about ate himself out of the suit he was wearing. I ate there uh, early in the season. Scott Matthews, our producer, he ate there today. He, he had a smile on his face still in the truck. 12.59 left, Wisconsin kicking off. Short pooch kick. And a fair catch, he can't run with it. Brandon Cottom made the catch. Let's check in with Robert Flores. Robert, what's going on in Lincoln? Yeah, Mike, we got an update. Nebraska coming back. Rex Burkhead from in close. Huskers went for two and got it. Northwestern still leading 21-18, under seven minutes to go. Wildcats with the ball. Boy, oh boy. Mm. That would be one of the big stunners if Northwestern could win on the road. Let's take a look at this week's BCS standings. It's brought to you by Allstate. LSU and Alabama. Thing I don't understand, the computers have LSU and Alabama tied for second, and Oklahoma State is in first. It's not the computers. Those are just machines. It's the guys that program the computers to say that LSU and Alabama, neither one of them is the best team in the country. Explain that one to me, if you would. Well, and, and you know, after tonight's ball game, LSU Alabama, it's going to be interesting to see how the BCS standings are coming out tomorrow on our the countdown show at 8:15. See how that shakes. 
Now you have made the argument before that if it's a close game there should be if it's a real close game there should be a rematch for a national championship between those two. I agree with your argument but I think what it says is there should be a playoff because every other team if that's the scenario then every, 118 other teams in this country are playing for nothing. Well OK now I, I say there should be consideration for that rematch. And, and what you have to do is the team who loses that game tonight, if they play well and they're good out there, there's no reason not to say, okay, I'm evaluating them based on the, their one loss, and it was a quality opponent. All right, here are the one versus two matchups since the BCS in 1998. Uh, this one could very well be as good or better as any of them because of the defenses those teams have. Purdue's going to have to kick it away. Webster. And they'll start after a 38 yard punt. They'll start from inside their 30 yard line. You know, I, I, you know, I, I guess, and, and what I'll do is Sunday, tomorrow morning, when I wake up and putting my ballot together for the AP, is I'll look at the, the team who loses tonight, compare them to Oklahoma State, and see how Oklahoma State plays against Kansas State tonight. And the other teams, Stanford, how they are with Oklahoma, all of these other schools, and I'll slot them there. But I'll give them credit for the fact that they had to play the number one team in the country. All those other teams more than likely would have lost to the number one team. Uh, understandable, and, and I again, I agree with your point. But the problem for me in this discussion is if you have two teams from the Southeastern Conference, and I don't think there's any argument that the Southeastern Conference is a premier conference in football. But if you establish that, and then you have the top two teams in that conference, and they're playing each other, and they play a close game, you can say, hey, it's the best conference in the country. There's the top two teams in the country, so they ought to play in the conference, so they ought to play again. To me, that denies every other team in the country under that scenario an opportunity to play for a national championship. So I, I agree with your argument. I think it's totally valid. But then to me, you turn around and say, all right, Boise State has no chance in that scenario. None whatsoever. And right now, Oklahoma State has no chance in that scenario. Stanford has no chance in that scenario. It is scenario. what it is, though. You, that's so why the body of work becomes. Playoff. But, but the body of work becomes a play. That's why Boise State doesn't have a chance. There's a head where they beat Georgia. There's a toe where they might beat a TCU or someone else. But somewhere in between there, you've got to have competitive games that challenge you. And that's why, to me, Boise State's not there. Oklahoma State, they're in the mix. They're playing against a rougher, tougher schedule. They're being challenged week in and week out. You talk about uh, Oregon. You, you look at, at, at the other schools. Oklahoma, look what Oklahoma's doing to A&M today. I understand. Devastating. But let's have a playoff. Uh, I'm not against Let's take I, the I, top eight teams and say the, the computers okay. are ridiculous, the people that yep. are slotting these spots well, with I, the and I think we would agree that the coaches poll the coaches should not be qualified to vote no they, if they're if they're following every team out there in the country then they're they're not doing their team a service uh, at, and then the the Harris poll you know I, I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of that so it's a flaw there there's no we have not found a way yet to identify the perfect scenario. We're trying to create a matchup of one versus two, the best at the end of the season. That's why I disregard if, it, if it, it, LSU and Alabama are from the same conference. They just happen to be from the same conference. Their body of work allows you to consider them at the end of the day. Again, I do, I do not disagree with, with your argument, but too many people are making too much money out of this, and it, it doesn't work. Maybe there is no perfect solution. Maybe there is no way to know. Obviously, if you pick the top eight teams in the country, whoever's number nine is going to be outraged that they didn't get. But don't you and I agree? Playoff. I think most of us would agree, though, that you can identify the top eight, and, and maybe there's a nine that's I on the shelf. So. I but, think so. But at least the top eight, you've got a good chance of identifying who they are. And then you tell Boise State, here's your chance. You have a legitimate opportunity to play for a national championship if you can win in this playoff system. Well, I still, I, I still, you know, they're going to have to have a body of work somewhere in there to deserve being in that top eight. Oh, now you want to exclude them from the top eight. No, I'm just saying that I'm, uh, you had mentioned them Timeout. as, a, as Wisconsin, an example. I had to respond to that. Timeout. <laughs> Don't want to leave that hanging out there. I watch, I always watch your show. This is fascinating <laughs> to me. We'll be back to Wisconsin in a moment. <laughs>
time to take a look at our Pacific Life game summary here at Camp Randall Stadium. And Russell Wilson threw for a very efficient 205 yards, ran for 76 more. Ball, 223 yards rushing, a career high. Three touchdowns, and Wisconsin racked up 52 points in 32 and a half minutes. Very impressive. Whew. That is a lot of points in a short time span. You don't see that stat very often. No. Russell Wilson watching his backup Richard freshman Joe Brennan. And Brennan with a chance to throw. Shows off his arm. Completes that one to Duckworth. Jeff Lewis, number 22, is in at running back. And like they usually are, they are loaded with running backs. Uh, that's the 20th play of over 10 yards from Wisconsin today. And, and, you know, this is an opportunity for these other players to execute and to have some fun. Joe Brennan out there, Jeff Duckworth. I mean, it's time for them to get a chance at some excellence. 568 yards in total offense. As Lewis out of Brookfield, Wisconsin, gets his 27th carry of the season. I imagine we'll be talking about Jeff Lewis in the near future and lots of yards being racked up. And Melvin Gordon behind him is a true freshman. Sherard Cadigan is in. He wears number 86. He's on the left wing. Wide open downfield, Manasseh Garner. That's only his second grab of the season. He's down to the 14-yard line. Yeah, I, I, you know, again, this is execution, and and for Joe Brennan, he's had a chance to stand on the sidelines and watch the master out there, Russell Wilson. This is patience allowing the route to develop. He went from one back to number two, his second option, and that's that's good execution of the game plan. Good throw. It's got a first down with 6:47 to go. Wisconsin trying to get in the 60s against their Big Ten opponent. And Lewis knocked out of bounds. Still up in the air as we are finishing this ball game. What is happening in Lincoln? We will keep you updated on that. And we understand Northwestern has scored again, maybe to put that game out of reach. Mm. They are going to be less than happy in Nebraska. Mm. Wilson signaling in the plays for his backup quarterback Joe Brennan and it's 28 18 now Northwestern without their starting quarterback leading in Lincoln against Nebraska. Well you know at this point here Jeff Lewis he's like hey now if, if there were bigger holes when Monty Ball was in there it <laughs> was a little bit different group in in mass up front but the folks who are in that offensive line right now you, we know for certain Bob Bostad and this coaching staff they'll be the next hosses of note yes they will and Brett Bielema the other day when we had a chance to visit with him said we we're getting calls from people you know, who want to come to Wisconsin who play these spots that we have developed uh, when you produce three guys off an offensive line that all go to start in the NFL in one year and then you've got other guys ready to replace them. You get two guys who are going to go to the NFL at least off of this line. Peter Kahn's the center and Kevin Zeitler the right guard. Zeitler may be a top 10 pick. And I love Peter Kahn's the way he runs. Yeah. As a center being able to pull and get around on when he's uncovered his blocking had some nice job blocks out on the edge today. Now they'll send on the field goal team and try from 29. Welch has already hit from 52. And they have now increased the total to 62 to 17 Wisconsin over Purdue. 
every Friday before a home game, a group of Badgers visits the American Family Children's Hospital to boost the spirits of the kids there. It's a pedi pediatric heart program and emergency care. That's what it's known for. Russell Wilson is there every time. And he made a request to the coaches that he wanted to talk to the kids who were most in jeopardy at that hospital, who were the sickest. And that takes a big man to do that. That takes a lot of courage. Hats off to Russell Wilson and those other kids. Another pooch kick. And there goes Mostert. They're just trying to keep the ball away from him. This kid is so dangerous. Coming up on the family of networks tonight, Cincinnati Pittsburgh, 7 o'clock on ESPNU. The Bearcats, the only team in the Big East still unbeaten. Number nine, South Carolina. Number seven, Arkansas on ESPN at 7.15. Then on ABC or ESPN2, you'll see either Notre Dame and Wake Forest against number 14, Kansas State, or number three, Oklahoma State. Cincinnati sitting over there in the Big East on top. Try to keep pace. Oh, watch out. Tipped and incomplete. Robert Flores with an update from Lincoln, Nebraska. Robert. Well, Northwestern has sealed this game. They go a drive that lasts seven minutes and 21 seconds, capped off by Kane Coulter's one-yard sneak, and Northwestern is going to take down number 10, Nebraska. They're leading by 10, less than a minute to go. That's good news for Michigan State. Boy, it is that, but what a stunner. Hats off to Nebraska for making that trip. No, more to my, more support or, to me. Excuse me, Northwestern. North, more support for my concept of teams being challenged week in and week out in these AQ conferences. You have to reward them. Nebraska having to play against a Northwestern team. Northwestern goes in there and beats them. The Mostert gets a chance for a carry. I'm just, I'm just trying to stoke well, some no, fire no. here. <laughs> I, it, it is an excellent point. There is, th there is no way to say a team that doesn't play one tough opponent after another doesn't deserve higher consideration than somebody that may play one or two good teams a year. You can't make that argument, obviously. Mostert again, boy, this guy's dangerous. I, and, and, and if you don't mind, I'd like to, I'd like to tip my hat to this band, the University of Wisconsin marching band. At halftime, great performance. They've been here entertaining the entire game. So many times, people, you know, somebody, why don't y'all talk more about the band? Why don't you give more time for the band on at halftime to show? Because it is a part of college football and, and the the spirit of it. And now, why don't you do that? Well, I have got zero <laughs> yank on time commitments like that. Um, and they have a they have a fifth quarter right here after the game. The band will play and put on a concert. Marv downfield intended for Graves. Sandy couldn't come up with it. Well, there have been some numbers put up today by Russell Wilson and overall Purdue quarterbacks historically. That number, that's pretty impressive. How about that? Yeah, and I'll leave it up to you to fill in the blanks as to who added up to the 179 number. Well, Purdue has. Uh, you know, it may not be the biggest name in college football, but they have run some great quarterbacks through that program who went on to great success in the NFL. Bob Greasy, let's start with him. Herman was there. Jim Everett was there. Drew Brees. I mean, there have Curtis been just, Painter. Yeah, just a ton of guys who have come through there and then gone on to great careers. Some other schools have had as many great college quarterbacks who didn't have the success in the pros. Notre Dame is obviously number two, and I mean, just a slew of guys have come through there with Joe Montana and Joe Theismann, you know, having the, the great pro careers. Who's the last, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Big Ten right now, but for Notre Dame, the last quarterback to go on and have a good pro career. It is. It has been a while for, for Notre Dame. For yeah. Notre Dame, it has. With a win last weekend, I'll get back to you. Tony yeah. Stewart surged to within eight points in the lead, putting the pressure on Carl Edwards as they battled it out for the title. Just three races to go. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup will continue at Texas. Coverage starts on ESPN tomorrow afternoon at two Eastern. Kyle Busch had his car parked for 
deliberately wrecking another car in Friday's truck race. And you got to really do a job on somebody to have NASCAR say you deliberately caused a wreck because it happens all the time. Mm. Guys tapping a fender mm. from behind. Hey, hey, back on that Notre Dame thought. I uh, had some guys up here in the booth here. Wait. Steve Berline. But not recently. Not recently. That, is that not amazing? That tells you, though, really, that they're programmed. Uh, exactly. It tells you what has happened in Notre Dame. Well, they're playing at Wake Forest tonight, aren't they? They are. One of our primetime offerings. Yep. We have 2.29 to go here. And Wisconsin with a big lead just trying to run out the clock, 62-17. All right, let me put you on the spot. It's LSU Alabama, the quote unquote game of the century. Who do you like? First half, I'm going with LSU. Second half, I'm going with Alabama. Whoa. At the end of 60, I'm going to say it's LSU. Really? Yeah, and the reason I'm going with LSU is because I think the the depth on the defensive line at LSU, freshness. They've got outstanding players led by Tyron Matthew in that secondary. And, and I, you know, somebody's got to make a play, a big play, above and beyond. But at the end of the day, this is a pick 'em game. I mean, it, it's, it's going to come down to execution and who makes, who makes the critical mistake. I think somebody Ball on start. special teams is going to make a play for LSU Number because their special teams Five -yard are penalty. so brilliant. Remains and Matthew might be the guy who makes a play to win the game. Could I, be. I, I just think LSU is just a, a remarkable team, as is Alabama. Their third in points allowed is LSU. One of those reasons, one of the reasons for that, West Virginia racked up a lot of points and a lot of yards, but Alabama first, 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 and first. I mean, Nick Saban certainly knows how to put a defensive unit together and take away the best stuff that you do. He is always able to do that. Okay, now yeah, here's Ball why start. I like Jarrett Lee Offense. at LSU. Number Steve 19. Cragthorpe has Five been around a long penalty. time and is an excellent Remains quarterback coach. Down. Has the NFL experience to match the wits of a Saban defense, right? So focused on Jarrett Lee and Jordan Jefferson, preparing them for the sophistication they're going to see. I like that. Somebody said this morning, this is a game for grown men. <laughs> and I think they're right. There are no guys waiting to mature in the top 22 on either one of those ball clubs. They're already there. <laughs> That's a good point. Never thought of it that way. They've all been <laughs> shaving for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Clock running as we approach a minute. Brennan throws and that's going to be shy of a first down. Well, there's nothing wrong with this here for Brett Bielema because he gets to run his punt team out there one more time to get some live action and practice punt protection. And nothing wrong with giving your backup quarterback a little action either because he's one play away from being in there when you might need him. Yep. 604 yards Wisconsin total offense today. 604 and they get 62 points. They will go to seven and two and erase a little bit of the memory of those heartbreakers that have burned in the last two weeks. Mm. How's that for kick coverage? Mm. Nice. Fred Hampton and Connor O'Neill down on special teams with 18 seconds left to go in the game. That's great coverage. And you can find out guys who want to play too, can't you? With 18 seconds to go in a blowout game, mm -hmm. guys that are still out there hustling and hitting. is running and that'll do it mercifully this will come to an end for the Boilermakers who may have come in here with high hopes but they're going to leave with a 62 to 17 shellacking at the hands of the Badgers of Wisconsin. Brett Bielema gets the congratulatory handshake. And we will be back to wrap it up from Wisconsin after this.